This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a common question in Kerbal Space Program. Is it better to go straight towards the Mun, or to get into orbit first, then make a maneuver out to the Mun? Here, I'll be taking a basic rocket and firing it straight up. Going to the Mun this way, though, is particularly difficult because we have to account for where the Mun is going to be without the aid of the maneuver editor. It took me several tries to launch at the correct time. We are not ever going to circularize into an orbit. This means that this craft will have to keep a pretty high thrust to weight ratio for the entire trip. For a small craft like this one that is only going to the Mun, our thrust to weight ratio is never an issue. We will keep firing our engines until we get an encounter with the surface of the Mun. Now for the purpose of this experiment, we are only going to focus on launching from Kerbin and landing on the Mun. We will not concern ourselves with a return. After our landing, we will see how much Delta V is remaining. This should be a good indicator of how efficiently we flew the mission. Landing is going to be the same as our launch. We are not going to circularize around the Mun, but instead, we are going to go directly for a landing. Now one downside to this method is that we are limited to landing on the near side of the Mun. Due to our good timing, this does mean we will be landing in an adequate location, we just won't be landing in a sunny location. I tried to get us to the Mun with as little velocity as I could, so that this is a pretty efficient landing. I am going to use the Kerbal Engineer Suicide Burn Timer. Now you can see it is up on the display at the top left. This should help give us a, a really good, pretty efficient landing. We could be even better and write a script with Cross and have the computer fly the entire mission. Uh, but our goal is not perfection, but to give a fair comparison that an average player may experience between these two methods. Now my suicide burn doesn't end up going perfectly, but I think it is sufficient to demonstrate how efficient a mission like this can be. Uh, you know, when you land you have to account for the train and, you know, I want to give myself a, a little bit of a buffer and not risk slamming my rocket into the surface of the Mun. So yeah, I didn't quite get this right. I I burned a little, just a little too early, but we didn't waste very much Delta V. And we can see our final result is 22 meters per second of Delta V here, almost. Here we are. Here's our final result. And we're going to compare our next test to that. With the magic power to revert our flight, we can safely get Jebediah home to try this test again. You can clearly see that we are using the exact same rocket for our second test. This time, we will be circularizing around Kerbin, making a maneuver out to the Mun, circularizing around the Mun, and finally landing. This will obviously be more steps, but we can see if it is more efficient. Because we are going to get into orbit around Kerbin first, we don't have to concern ourselves with the current location of the Mun. We can set up our maneuver at the proper time once in orbit. The high thrust to weight ratio of this craft actually makes performing a gravity turn a little harder, but for the sake of our test, I think it is important to use the exact same rocket. We do not need to get into a high orbit, and a matter of fact a low orbit is going to be more efficient anyway, and the goal is to try our two methods as efficiently as possible while you know piloting by hand. We can play around with our maneuver node to set up an encounter with the Mun. We are going to want to set up a very close encounter with the Mun. Again, to be efficient, we are looking to get in a periapsis of less than 15 kilometers. I am wanting to make good use of the Oberth effect during this attempt. We are going to be circularizing around the Mun before landing. Now this will let us pick where we want to land. There are many locations on the Mun that make poor landing sites, and our goal being to test uh, out how much delta V we have left over upon landing, we should try to land somewhere where we don't have to spend extra fuel trying to avoid surface obstacles. I prefer to land on the light side, and because we are going to circularize, we can better pick our landing site. We are just going to have that option, and in this case we can see here is a good spot. Um, yeah, I am going to land, I am going to try and find a flat spot here to start our deorbit burn. Okay, just like the previous attempt, we are going to use the same methods for landing. Here setting up my maneuver node editor to 
just give me a rough idea of my timing and delta V needs. But we'll be using the Kerbal Engineer readout up top and trying to perform a suicide burn. Again, the goal is not necessarily a perfect landing, but a good, uh, pretty efficient landing. Something that most players might experience in a typical run. And this looks like a good spot right here. We'll land. And then we will look at our delta V amount and see how much remains after we land. And then we can compare whether we think one method is more efficient than the other. I can tell you that I would have built my rocket a little differently for this method and would have had less dry mass as far as engines. And that would mean even more delta V for the same amount of fuel. But I thought it's important to use the same rocket and make a fair comparison with the same amount of dry mass using the two methods. We're coming in for a landing and I can already tell we're going to have more remaining delta V for this particular method. You can see we have just shy of 400 meters per second, meaning this method is more efficient. Well, thanks for joining me on this discussion for this common Kerbal question.